What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Microsoft's two and a half hour Windows 10 keynote just ended. And if you're not one of the lucky few that had that amount of time to spare, like if you were working for example, you missed a ridiculous amount of awesomeness. So let me go ahead and jump right in and tell you everything that Microsoft announced. So first, the quote that really sums up the entire day came from the end uh, from CEO Satya Nutella who said, we want to move from people needing Windows to choosing Windows to loving Windows. And Microsoft is moving in that direction. So usually when I do recaps, I'll start at the beginning with what they announced and I'll end at the end with what they announced. But I got to mix up the order, at least at the beginning, because freaking holograms! Holograms. Microsoft introduced a brand new Windows holographic concept that brings augmented reality from like this level to like a level that you can't even see my hand. So imagine seeing just your baller Minecraft build right in your living room. Uh, the potential for this stuff is absolutely incredible. So it's a headset, of course, uh, and it's called HoloLens. And people are probably already trying to think of the HoloLens whole names like we saw with Google Glass, but it looks a little silly but it does allow the users to see holograms wherever they go. Uh, they can see games, apps, and more, all embedded right in the headset itself. Uh, it doesn't even look like a real thing. Microsoft said it's going to be available in the Windows 10 timeframe, which is kind of vague and does leave them some wiggle room, but it looks like it's coming soon. Microsoft said they're also making it very clear that holographic is something it intends to bring to the market. This is no way vaporware at all. And aside from just seeing holograms, they want you to hear holograms. You can hear holograms behind you, like if Tupac, you know, holograms coming up to do a rap, you know he's back there. Uh, in one example, Microsoft showed off Skype being projected onto a wall. In another, a Minecraft world was easily accessible right in the middle of your living room. So imagine just, you know, maybe like your wife or mom or dad, whatever's making dinner and you're just sitting there just freaking chopping trees. You look a little silly, but it's beyond awesome. Uh, Microsoft said the experiment is a mixture of augmented reality uh, by taking advantage of holograms and the headset worn by users. The headset, by the way, I know it looks a little silly, uh, but it's no bigger than Oculus Rift. So you've gotten used to seeing that sucker on your face. This is going to look pretty natural. So aside from just a crazy cool novelty factor, Microsoft sees a huge potential use cases for the holographic headset, uh, not just in gaming or for home use. Uh, they specifically mentioned architects walking around potential uh, decisions or astronauts roaming around different planets. Like just imagine them being on Mars and looking around and being like, hey dude, I'm on Mars. Uh, and imagine what kind of possible education programs developers could create with this as well. Uh, one of the coolest things is I thought about the HoloLens, it's an untethered PC essentially. You don't have to plug this into a computer, it's its own encapsulated computer. Uh, so no wires or PC needed. Microsoft says it'll also support spatial sound, which means you'll be able to actually again hear the holograms. Uh, similar to how Oculus is implementing 3D sound uh, for its latest VR headset. Uh, a high-end CPU and GPU will also be included in the headset, along with a third processor Microsoft made. They're just calling it holographic processing unit, or HUPU. Uh, other fancy voodoo includes advanced sensors and you just see through the lenses. All right, so I skipped around a little bit, but I just had to j jump right in with freaking holograms. Now we'll start with how the keynote actually began. It was with Windows 10. So the big question I had was, when's it going to be available and how much is it going to cost? Uh, the first thing, uh, it's going to be a free upgrade, but only for the first year of its existence. So upgrade within the first year. Uh, that includes upgrades from Windows 8.1 and Windows 7, along with smartphones running Windows Phone 8.1. Once you've updated your device, Microsoft says it'll keep the software current for its lifetime of that device, which is kind of nice. Uh, and the new builds for this will be launching sometime next week. So you don't know when it's going to be launching officially, uh, but if you want to get your hands on early build, next week will be the time for that. So again, free for the first year after that. It's going to cost you some monies. We don't know how many. So they talked about Windows 10 for like a really long time, but here's some tidbits. The cliff note versions, so to speak. Uh, Windows 10's design. So some new features that were discussed today, which haven't really been mentioned before, include a full screen start menu, a uh, new action center for interacting with notifications in the sidebar area, a uh, brand new settings experience where you can quickly tweak your system settings as well. Windows 10 also features a continuum feature for computers that double as a laptop and tablets. So you can move around with the mouse and keyboard like you would if you're just sitting at your desk. But when you switch into tablet mode, like if you pull your Surface off its keyboard dock, for example, uh, it'll prompt you to ask if you want to move your device into tablet mode, and it'll sort of put everything to you full screen. You put it back in the dock, and it'll go back to sort of a whole bunch of different windows. So it goes touch friendly when you need it to, uh, and it'll go more desktop friendly when you need it to. Just a really cool thing that Microsoft's incorporated. And again, you have the option to do it. It's not going to just do it on its own and you know start thinking for itself. 
Next, let's talk about sweet Cortana. She's awesome on Windows Phone. She is going to be awesomer on Windows 10 because she's going to be built into Windows 10 and more specifically built into the taskbar. A small microphone icon will remind you that she's going to respond to voice commands. A Microsoft Digital Assistant will live right there on your desktop and sometimes offer notifications as well. Otherwise, it looks like the same old Cortana we already know pretty well. You can ask questions, uh, you can search the internet, you can check weather, or just have her tell you a joke. She'll sing to you too. Uh, you can also call up documents uh, and PowerPoint presentations, anything else from Microsoft Office, searching through your local drive, cloud storage, OneDrive, uh, ask questions like show me photos from December, whatever date, uh, and they'll, she'll show you that. Uh, so Joe Belfiore said that having Cortana on your PC is like having another member of your family around, sitting you and helping you out, getting things done. Well, members of my family aren't that helpful, but she's there, and I think Cortana is one of the best virtual assistants out there, and it only makes sense to have it on the desktop. But Cortana's original home was on your phone, so what about phones? Uh, Windows 10 for phones and tablets preview. Uh, that's going to be coming in February, just get that out of the way. Uh, but now you can finally, it seems weird to even have to say this, finally, finally, with an extra finally, uh, set a background image, uh, making your phone much more customizable uh, and personal. You can do that on previous versions uh, as well, but you get much more flexibility with what it's going to show through the tiles. It also looks much cleaner than just setting a background image uh, for tiles. Although I imagine that that option is still available if you just want that as well. Uh, let me be very clear though, this is a gigantic major upgrade, not just a fresh coat of paint. So customization options are super nice. There are plenty of new features to match the Windows 10 experience uh, across just a ton of form factors. For example, new Action Center at Windows 10 is synced to the PC. Uh, so notifications you dismiss on your phone will also disappear in your computer or the other way around. Uh, and so it goes just like that. It's super simple and really elegant. We also saw new setting menus, inline replies for messaging, Skype's integrated right into messaging, and finally, because Microsoft is putting emphasis on universal apps, the app ecosystem has potential to be better than ever, so you'll see Office, of course, and much, much, much more running perfectly on these smaller form factors. So hopefully, apps going to get way better because it's one platform across everything. Then Microsoft was like, hey, you heard, maybe you've heard something about this Project Spartan, or as I'm just calling it, Audios Internet Explorer. Uh, it's a new browser Microsoft introducing with Windows 10. So just a code name right now, but I like it. Maybe it'll make its way to production. It's built on a completely new rendering engine and it looks very, very, very clean uh, and very minimal, which is kind of what people want, at least what I want uh, in a browser. So pretty looks aside, there are also some really good tools included to make the browsing experience much more powerful than typical Chrome's, Firefox Eye, uh, and Opera's. Uh, so there's a neat annotating mode which allows users to draw all over web pages. You can comment, scribble, and then share notes with your friends, family, or people that you hate. Uh, worth noting though is that the drawing all over the browser isn't exclusive to touch and pen, which is a really kind of neat feature they introduced, which means you can easily use this feature with your old just desktop and mouse. Uh, it doesn't quite look as nice and elegant, but you can still very easily share notes and add comments and click anywhere on the page, uh, and you're good to go. So the next big thing with the Spartan browser uh, that Microsoft focused on was the action of reading, which is really what you're doing on a browser, at least most things, you're reading text. The new features essentially format web pages to look like a book, uh, making it much easier to digest whatever content's on screen. Uh, for long form content, it's gonna eliminate any of the kind of nastiness of busy pages, it provides a much more minimal reading environment, it's clean, simple, well, like what you find with services like Pocket or Instapaper, uh, or even reading lists in Safari. And of course, Cortana, which is also again new to Windows 10, we built right into Spartan. As the tons of rumors have suggested recently, Cortana will be easily and quickly available right in the address bar. So you get pretty much infinite access to that personal assistant everywhere. Type in weather, and immediately weather is going to start populating and pulling down uh, in that bar. Same goes for flight information. If you want restaurant uh, web pages, for example, Cortana is going to be there to help you collect that information and also tell you directions, menu, contact information, and just a ton more. Next, let's talk about Xbox, since they're part of Microsoft. There's an Xbox app for Windows 10 before you're like, oh, John, an app. This app is pretty cool. Players will be able to play one another across the Xbox One and Windows 10 versions of the game, which is kind of badass. All right, so cross-platform gaming, you can also talk to people that are on Xbox Live. A lot of awesomeness there. If you want to read any more about what I'm talking about, um, go to technobuffalo.com and check out just the massive amount of articles we posted. And then things got kind of crazy. So you know what Windows needed? More form factors, maybe. Uh, how about a freaking 84-inch 4K screen? Boom, meet the Surface Hub. It is, I just said, a ridiculously large 4K display uh, with a ton of high-tech sensors and wizardry, dual cameras, microphones, speaker and stylus support all built right into it. 
Uh, it's running a heavily modified version of Windows 10, which is obviously adaptive for just a ginormous uh, screen size. Looks really cool. You can use it for whiteboarding. You can have Skype show up in a corner for conferencing. Uh, and also, 84 inch 4K display. No idea what that's going to cost, uh, but I wager it's going to cost either one of these and one of these, or at least a first, firstborn child. So we don't know. So just a ton of stuff came out of Microsoft today. You got virtual reality, 84 inch sets. Uh, you've got Windows 10 for desktop, Windows 10 for phones, Cortana, and a lot of other stuff that I just didn't have time to mention. Otherwise, this would have been a two and a half hour video. Uh, anyway, guys, what do you think? What are you excited about, not excited about? I want to hear your thoughts. Leave the comments in my pantaloon region. Till next time, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Finally gonna exhale. See you guys next video. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for watching another Techno Buffalo video. I hope you enjoyed. We love consumer electronics here, and if you are as passionate about them as we are, hit the big subscribe button. We've got new videos coming at you every day. We talk about phones, tablets, laptops, and everything in between. And if you like video games, check us out at Twitch, where we play video games, although admittedly not very well, at twitch.tv slash technobuffalo. All the links are right down below.